Okay, right. Well, thank you very much. Without further ado, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Ross McNally, the CEO and Executive Chair of Hampshire Chamber of Commerce, to we'll say a few words and introduce our first speaker. He's kindly hosting this event and will be taking the Q&A session later. Over to you, thank Ross. Thank you so much, Pat. Welcome, everyone. Uh, as Pat says, I'm Ross McNally. I'm the CEO of Hampshire Chamber. Um, it was sad not to be able to see you in person this year. Um, in delivering this second Winning in the Solent Regent conference, um, and of course, um, our lo inaugural live on online event, um, we are really, really glad to see that we've had so many people and so much interest in the event, bearing in mind these extraordinary circumstances. Um, this is being brought to you through a strong and developing partnership between Solent University and the University of Portsmouth, and of course supported by Hampshire Chamber of Commerce. This is a recognition of a commitment to working collaboratively um, in delivering the aim of the winning in the Solent region, supporting local businesses, supporting your business and those across the whole of the Southern region. And this year's theme is certainly Apposite, building strong teams and in particular focusing on leading out of a crisis and managing in a, no in a new normal. I think it's more important than ever for colleagues to come together working collaboratively and bringing together expertise and knowledge in support of the, the region's business community. We all understand the challenges that many small businesses are experiencing. And we want you to know that both universities and of course the Chamber of Commerce are here to support you and to work with you. So please do reach out to us so that we can work with you through but not only this, this crisis, but uh, ongoing as we rebuild um, in the new economy. I am proud that both universities are small business charter accredited universities. And uh, also, importantly, and I would say this, members of Hampshire Chamber of Commerce. In this conference event, we have two guest speakers representing each university. A professor of Leadership Studies from the University of Portsmouth, Professor James McCalman, and Gillian Saiva, Head of Business, Finance and Accounting and Higher and Degree Apprenticeships at Solent University. So we will hear a lot around leadership and management in these difficult times. Following their presentations, we will of course have Q&A session, an opportunity to explore uh, leadership and management practice across all of your first-hand experiences. And we've also already had quite a few questions submitted, but uh, as, as Pat has already done, I would um, request that you put forward your questions under the Q&A section that you'll see on your screen. Many have already submitted questions, and there may be too many for us to cover, but we will obviously look to answer these following the session. We're also recording. So it's a little notice to you that the session is being recorded. However, we will stop the recording for the Q&A just to ensure that there's some safe space and opportunities for debate uh, at, the, at the end of the event. But I think that's enough for me, to be honest. I will be here to do the Q&A session later, but uh, it's important that we hear uh, from our two guest speakers. And it's my pleasure to introduce now the first speaker, Professor James McCalman. We will be speaking on leading out of a crisis. Thank you, Royce. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, what a very, very strange world we live in. <laughs> um, when I first said yes to, to the conference, I thought I was going to trot up in a nice conference centre and get a really good lunch out of this. Uh, instead, we are in a remote world, uh, a very strange one. Um, so what I'd like to do is maybe spend the next 15 minutes talking about notions of leadership in a crisis, but more importantly, try and get you to think about where you're going. Uh, so one of the main points I'm going to try and make is that you're going to have to, at one and the same time, be both a creative, dynamic, leadership oriented superhuman being whilst taking care of the knitting that you know there are operational and management issues that you also have to think about as well 
So what I'll do is I'll talk a bit about a number of different focuses. Uh, I see from some of the, the pre-questions that we've got, there is a sort of issue or concern about um, how does one differentiate leadership and management in, in these difficult times. So hopefully if I can look at the leadership aspects and perhaps um, Gillian will come in after me and look at some of the more managerial focus. Um, so I guess one of the interesting things is what kind of world are we going to be leading into? Um, what's different about leadership in this particular context? Um, <clears throat> what The argument I'll make is that we are moving into a world of the wicked. So we've come out or we're coming out of crisis. We're coming out of, of, of a, a, a situation where we're being told to, to do things. And we're now coming into a different type of world. And that world is going to bring a number of different challenges. So I guess the keynote question is, how do you think both strategically and operationally? Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the focus of attention of that? Um, I'd suggest that um, despite President Trump, there are a number of issues coming out of um, a coronavirus pandemic, which are really opportunistic. So again, if we think of the Hampshire region, uh, one of the benefits that organizations might have is the fact that it will be less and less, less international travel. So even it doesn't take too great a leap of the imagination to say that more and more people are going to be staying in the UK and looking for seaside resorts, et cetera, uh, for holidays. So there's an opportunity and there will be lots of opportunities in the new normal. So again, I wouldn't necessarily look at the pandemic in an entirely negative sense as you come out of the pandemic. It's about how it's about you as an individual and your business thinking, how relevant are we now? And how do we make ourselves relevant? Where are we going in the future? Um, I guess one way of focusing on that is trying to imagine or think about what the problems you have are. Um, by that, I mean, one could argue that there are different ways of handling business problems, um, depending on the nature of them. So if, if I look at this particular slide here, what I'm suggesting is that uh, in a particular sense, what we had moving into this, the lockdown was eventual identification of a critical problem. And with a critical problem, you have a commander response. I think now what we're doing is we're moving into these wicked problems, and I'll dwell more on that in, in a moment. By critical, what I mean is um, the problem is so self-evident that it's a crisis that you often get quite a distinct, commandeering, command-oriented focus associated with a set of rules and regulations. So once it was identified that we were having this coronavirus pandemic and it was beginning to kick in in the UK, you find things like Boris Johnson stepping in and finally making command decisions. So uh, we get told that we can't leave our homes, etc. The the situation, the problem, legitimizes the behaviour. The New normal, or as we move out of that stage of the um, the lockdown, what we're going to be doing is moving into. Oops, sorry. Um, I would suggest what we're now moving into is a situation where you will find that your business is being questioned in terms of its its relevancy. So. What is happening is that we're beginning to be faced with a number of different wicked problems. By wicked problems, what I mean is it's a problem that's either new or recalcitrant. It keeps coming back, but the problem itself is quite complex and quite difficult to deal with. So in a practical sense, if I'm in the retail sector, my wicked problem is how do I try and engage with buyers when buyers are no longer there? You know, um, you, we've seen the massive move towards online shopping. Um, if you're not geared up that way, how do you get geared up that way? So leadership becomes a key issue here. And I guess from my perspective, what I would be suggesting is that people in your organization are going to be looking to you for that help and that assistance uh, in that capacity. 
Um, so how do you deal with the future? How do you deal with a, a, a wicked problem? My argument here is, first of all, the new normal isn't about elegant solutions. It's about fit. It's about pragma pragmatism, about trying to bring together clumsy solutions. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples of that in a moment. But um, faced with a wicked problem of uncertainty in what the future is, we tend to try and rely on tried and trusted mechanisms. So um, that would be what we'd, we would include as, as, as management behavior. You know, this, this is the stuff that's worked for us in the past. It will work for us again. That might not necessarily be true in the future. Um, what will be needed, I would suspect, is a notion or an idea of solving problems in what would, the French would term uh, bricolage. A bricoleur or, or bricolage is a process where we basically try and come up with pragmatic solutions to future problems. So the people that are successful at leading in that sense are those who are willing to experiment and do different things. Um, this is a good example here of <clears throat> solving a wicked problem. So we saw during the, the, the significant stages of the, the pandemic uh, problems associated with PPE in the National Health Service. And what you find is schools and colleges and even universities coming together and producing through 3D printing, et cetera, et cetera, uh, face masks for hospitals. Uh, rarely were they asked to do so, but they engaged in the process. And it's a good example of finding a solution to a problem which traditionally we wouldn't have looked at. Again, if there had been problems with PPE equipment in the past, the NHS would have, assault, would have attempted to solve that problem via the, its purchasing and procurement processes. In this particular instance, people bring together unique, creative, and volunteering solutions where, in an un, where the world is not clear, it doesn't matter where you start from. You basically stitch together solutions. I would suggest that as you move out of lockdown and your businesses become more active, you need to look at how, what is the new normal like in terms of how are we going to find solutions? And that's got a lot more to do with creative creativity than it has to do with management. Uh, so experimentation, learning from mistakes, um, people being brought in for their ideas and for their, for their potential solutions. And it doesn't necessarily have to be leader all the time. Because as we come out of leadership in this particular context, because of the novelty of the future and its unpredictability, there is an opportunity to engage people. Uh, people will be more likely to say yes to things, I suspect, because that they have an uncertain future. And if you're helping them through that uncertain future, people are a lot more flexible. Uh, one of the other aspects of it is that there are ripple effects. So an example of a ripple effect will be businesses helping other businesses, uh, charitable organizations, volunteering organizations, getting help from and helping other organizations. That it's been summed up in that notion of we're all in this together. So one particular ripple effect I would suggest is if you don't have the answer, pop out a question to the general population and see if you can find that answer. You know, an even simpler example would be universities are great places for getting people to solve your problems. And funnily enough, we're not in it for the money. You know, the, the thing about that is, as a leadership studies professor, I'm interested in leadership challenges within organizations and helping people find solutions to that. That's not from a, a a business or financial perspective, it's because I think that's what universities are there to do, is to help students, but to also help the communities that they exist within. So again, if you're stuck, ask other people. Um, so uh, I don't want to over abuse my time, so let me try and focus on you as an individual. Um, how do I respond? One of the things that I think that you may need to do is try and overcome some of the classic instincts of business behavior, of needing more and more information for more and more certainty. 
what's needed as we come out of this crisis is communication with people. Uh, and again, this notion of we're going to have to ha have different ways of communicating effectively to people. So if I'm in a room with people, I can see their behavioral responses, you know, whether you like something, whether you dislike something. If I'm online, that's more complex and complicated, but it's not impossible. I move from the non-verbal to the verbal. I listen more to what people are saying to me and find out what the meaning behind that is. Uh, but leadership in this particular moving out stage is also about taking responsibility. The buck does actually rest with you and people will be looking for guidance from you and also a way of, of you ensuring or engaging with them by keeping constantly keeping them constantly involved. So this then means that you've got the need to use complementary leadership skills. In this particular instance, you're going to have to learn a balancing act between forceful behavior in terms of when there are problems intervening to solve in a command type way, and also enabling behavior of understanding that you don't know all the answers, but there will be other people. And the trick is, Am I willing as a leader to ask other people to help me? Because quite a lot of leadership and a lot of difficulties with leadership is that whole notion of or the Trump process that I can solve every single problem that there is in the United States. Well, guess what? You can't. You really can't. There isn't a leader alive that can solve all the problems. Good leaders are the ones who are willing to ask questions. Uh, let me quickly finish on, on a couple of, of what I think are significant issues. One is about you. How self-aware where are you of your own leadership style? You know, how do you lead? Uh, and are you willing in that sense to learn and become more adaptable as time progresses? Because the more adaptable person is likely to be more amenable to change. And in that sense, um, understanding that change is about moving forward in whatever way, shape, or form that is. I'll also, I'd also suggest that you know, some, some of us will become victims of this process. You know, if one looks at it, you, can you seriously ask yourself the question, will my business exist in a year or a couple of years' time? Uh, and what is it going to look like? And it might be worthwhile at this point in time of thinking, where are we? Do we have a survival? What does that survival look, at, look like? And again, as was mentioned previously, there are people here that are more than happy to help. You know, if you send me an email in terms of, of leadership questions, more than happy to, to, to come into your organization and give you some assistance, whatever assistance that might be. I think uh, at the end of the day, it's about understanding uh, the, the diversity that you have within your own organization, hopefully. Um, at that point, I have used up my 15 minutes. So I am going to stop there and pass over to Gillian. Sorry, everybody. Gillian, I'm just going to interrupt you quickly. We can't hear you. I think you have your microphone muted. <laughs> Thanks, Gillian. Thank you. Yes, should have known better to unmute myself. Hello. Good morning, everyone. And um, thank you, James, for giving that uh, really good oversight into uh, getting out of a crisis. Uh, what I want to focus on is um, how we can actually manage the new normal as we come out of this crisis. Um, what I'm going to do is draw upon a body of work in doing that that has just been recently published by uh, the Chartered Management Institute. Uh, I'm actually a board member for the southeast region of the CMI and feel that there was no point in trying to go in and personally reinvent the wheel in terms of trying to share with you what is the new normal when there has been a lot of work done over this very short period of time during the crisis. And I thought no better information to share with you all than the Better Managers Manual, and you all will be able to um, 
download a PDF copy of this uh, from the CMI website after this event. It's open access. How do we manage it? What is the normal? Do we even know? I think it's fair to say that it is still uh, defining itself as we come out of the COVID-19 crisis and try to get an understanding of what workplaces will actually look like and what our country will look like and indeed what our world would look like and also what people will look like. What will people want um, in terms of um, their needs as to what they want to sustain a life, a livelihood, job, society uh, and of course that will then drive the business world and as to what that will have to respond with. But of course not forgetting um, you, you know, we're leading out of a crisis here. We're trying to understand what's actually going on. And there's been a massive shock factor um, that has really embedded against everyone here. And we will talk through that in more detail. Um, but it has been dramatic. It has taken many lives. And sadly, we're not out of it yet. It will take many more. And I think just this black cloud of uncertainty um, really aggravates a lot of pragmatists out there and people that just really want to get on and grab the bull by the horns, for want a better way of saying it, and move forwards. In terms of the Better Manager's Manual, I'm trying to put some structure, some themes, some pillars around how we can really harness this and move forwards. Um, what I'm going to take you through is the five key themes of flexible working, crisis management, uh, the all-important mental health and well-being trying to identify what the new employment landscape actually looks like. And of course, what is really important is good new governance as we pave the way ahead to be sustainable for everyone. I'm going to take the opportunity to share with you also five top tips um, that you can take away. And that has actually been shared from um, the CEO of the uh, Chartered Management Institute, Anne Franca. So, Delving into flexible working, we all have been forced into flexible working, whether we have liked it or not, um, by the sheer shift of organisations having to close their doors and people retreat to their homes. Homes have become workplaces, and as people have struggled to uh, put together makeshift offices and deal with lagging Wi-Fi and struggle with all sorts of video conferencing platforms, whether it's Zoom, Skype for Business, or this uh, Adobe Connect, people have obviously came up against a very, very acute learning curve. And I would argue everyone has actually mastered it very, very well. And along with it comes an element of patience and understanding as, as people work with technology and actually get to grips with that. Flexible working, as you know, was very much on the agenda of a lot of workplaces. Uh, we know that we've moved into you know, a new century. We're dealing with multiple age generations within workplaces. People have got differing expectations. And before we were forced into this crisis, people were already questioning the normality of what life was. We know that everyone was in a culture of working very hard. And people were trying to escape that and maybe grab one day a week to actually work from home. And a lot of organizations had actually embraced flexible working uh, policies and were encouraging that, which of course impacted on better health and well-being, and also looking at productivity. I think in terms of flexible working, uh, the benefits are very clear. You will see there on this on the screen here. And um, it's, it's quite interesting, CMI during the crisis, so between the 23rd of April and the 6th of May, they managed to survey the region of 1,800 uh, managers. And what they reported was that 59% of managers um, actually want to work from home at least two days a week. So I think what we have is moving out of this crisis is that people are wanting to embrace flexibility much more and embed that into their organizations. A lot of people are actually seeing the benefits of actually not rushing around, not building in commutes, and so forth. And I know many organizations, as we move forwards, are, of course, doing a critical analysis of all of their expenditure. And of course, estate office space 
is very expensive. And of course, they're looking at how they can perhaps reduce those fixed costs to their business moving forward. So uh, the flexible working element can actually have um, an ability to, um, to address that as well. Just looking at crisis managing, we know that um, certainly James picked up on you know your leadership skills and how managing uh, crisis, drawing upon what's deep within you in, in terms of your leadership ability, is something that maybe managers have never even had to face. Uh, we can certainly say that COVID has been the ultimate stress test for leaders and managers and also businesses. Um, I think many people have said how if they sort of reflect back on how maybe they have managed crisis in the past, if they've maybe been involved in an industry before that was working in a very fast-paced element and always dealing with crisis, yes, they are actually better equipped to move forward in this area that we're currently in. Um, but ultimately, people are digging deep within themselves now to actually say, okay, we're in a crisis. How do I get myself out of it? And I think James referred to it very nicely there, actually asking yourself some difficult questions, reflecting on your self-awareness, reflecting on your leadership style, and um, really saying, how well am I equipped to take this forward? Maybe what help and support do I actually need with that? Um, James also mentioned communication. And I think what we have been very mindful of is the importance of clear communication. Um, one, some people might say you can never communicate too much, really. And of course, we all know ourselves. We will reflect on how we all have um, very much, you know, listened to the uh, communication that has came from the media and, and the government, and better try to understand what's happening around uh, managing um, COVID. And of course, everyone has been quite critical of what our government leaders have done or what they haven't done and so forth. So I think that is obviously something we have to be mindful of when we put ourselves in that position to communicate. What are we communicating? How authentic is it? What are we basing our decisions on in terms of what we're communicating? So I think that's very, very key as well. Again, the importance of connecting with your teams. Um, the well-being of your teams and yourself is obviously key. And of course, being moved into this acute uh, remote working environment is something that leaders and managers have had to really focus on in terms of how are their people doing the regular check-ins, um, but making sure that there is the capacity within your business to actually um, still maintain operations if you have people that have been taking out genuinely uh, because they have been poorly because of COVID or even their mental health has been impacted and obviously their productivity, not what it was before. So just then looking at mental health and well-being in its entirety, um, you will see at the right hand side of this page there is a guide to COVID-19 stages of grief. Uh, some of you may be familiar with that, and I will look at that in more detail in the next slide. Some of you may well identify with where you currently are within that wheel, um, uh, or, or maybe have been. Um, but I think with any people who are in there managing businesses, um, it is really important that you consider not only your own personal health and well-being, but that of the others, and moving forwards, what that might be like. Um, we know mental health and well-being has been on, on the agenda for quite some time now within the country, and I do believe this week is actually Mental Health and Wellbeing Awareness Week. Um, a lot of organisations have already embraced that, and we're building up <clears throat> the capability of their managers by carrying out mental health first aid training, for example, or other training that's available throughout a range of other organisations. Um, I think it's really important that managers understand what mental health, um, and particularly poor mental health, looks like within organisations and within their individuals, because it is something that can creep up quite unknown, because, of course, we know a lot of stigma does exist around it, and employees can be very good at trying to mask their symptoms, um, and then something perhaps very small happens that then is a catalyst to someone just 
not not being able to cope overall. So I think it's really important that everyone has an ability to be self-aware and, of course, be aware of others because your people are your greatest asset within your business. And that takes me on to looking at the Kubler-Ross model. Uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross uh, developed this some time ago. And within um, your social media feeds, uh, feeds, you may well have had various adaptations of this being pushed through during the height of the COVID crisis. And I must admit, it's a model that I have um, used myself as a crutch to reflect on and actually understand how I've been feeling how my family has been feeling and how my team members and other colleagues have been feeling. And I think it's really important that it is given some consideration towards and particularly how this is essentially a grief model, but it is also a managing change model. So it's very relevant for the here and now, but it's also very, very relevant for how you might then be applying your leading out of a crisis strategy and in particular um, how you might be communicating change, how you might be involving your team members in identifying what that change might be and of course you know you will have to make difficult decisions. Um, has, has everyone within your organisation then potentially got a job moving forwards if potentially your business model is going to shift to go with what the new normal and uh, the demand out, out there in society will have. So I would say do make yourself aware of this model and use it as something to just inform yourself moving forward as you do put those changes in place. Because, of course, we're moving through to this new uh, employment landscape. Uh, the UK had good, very proud stats on employment. We were pretty much at full employment. Uh, unfortunately, there has been um, new stats actually released just today and unfortunately our unemployment um, has jumped up significantly. Um, I think the figure is something we now have um, uh, 2.1 million in April claimed unemployment benefits and we know sadly that that will rise as organisations do identify what the new business landscape is and subsequently the resourcing landscape within their organisation, which of course is going to create a very different employment landscape out there uh, for everyone. Um, so it is really important. Um, I, I, I know there's a lot of people going through it at the moment. There's a lot of small businesses that I've been working with throughout the COVID crisis that have had to pivot, shape um, their uh, business offering to actually go with something that's going to maintain their cash flow. Uh, but within that, they've been quite innovative and they've found new ways of operating. They've identified new customers that they maybe didn't even think of reaching out to uh, before the COVID crisis. So I, th I think in the midst of all of this doom and gloom, there is actual opportunity. And James referred to very nicely about the innovation that we have seen within the UK, particularly in the response to the government's call um, for uh, production of PPE. And I think with that, this also provides ongoing opportunity. So you may be aware of the Innovate UK uh, opportunities. We know that there is there's obviously a large uh, innovation support package to support businesses through coronavirus. Um, I was just reading this morning the Enterprise M3 LEPS um, business update, and they have um, shared very nicely what's happening, particularly across Hampshire. Uh, with regards to organisations that are seizing opportunities for innovation on the back of the Innovate UK um, Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund, Future Flight Challenge, there's 30 billion of business funding available and they're encouraging organisations to look at alternatives within aviation and flight and we know it's things like supply chains, using drones, using other other methods. And I think that's just one example of how we're lifting the lid on innovation here and there's funding and support for organisations to actually move forwards with that. Um, we know there's been a lot of great plans that were in place, fantastic robust strategies of growth for organisations, and in many cases, a lot of that's no longer relevant. So managers are having then to look at, OK, well, what is my strategy going to be moving forward from my organisation? How am I actually going to manage 
um, manage that, manage my teams within that. Uh, James referred to the importance of actually reflecting on yourself, your leadership ability. Along with that, it's the importance of reflecting on yourself and also your team, and then looking at what actually is available um, within your current business, but also this is a prime opportunity where there could be new ways for your business to grow to actually think, okay, where can I take my business? How can I redevelop the people within my business so they have got the knowledge piece, the skills and the overall capability to help take your business in the new direction that it may need to go in. And that's where, again, a university is there to help and support with um, skills training and development, accredited programs. And of course, as you know, particularly for small businesses, there's an excellent incentive out there um, under the apprenticeship funded programs where you only have to pay 5% of the overall cost of that. So again, some great opportunities to actually consider. We know that if we want to move ahead, it's important in doing the right thing the right way. And I think it is clear to say there is a new code of, of good governance actually unfolding around all of this. Um, we know a lot of high street retailers that tried to keep their doors open um, at the beginning of the crisis were criticised um, uh, under areas of, of greed, maybe not considering their customers, certainly not considering their workers. And again, um, society is very quick to actually um, criticise what actually is going on. And I think what has happened during this crisis has made people reflect and think against their own moral compass. And moving out of this, again, it's, it's very important that businesses do take a very measured approach in how they return to their business model with obviously protecting their staff and, and protecting their customers. Um, there's a mention here of a three-step plan. Obviously, survival is key to that. It is important to obviously reconnect and communicate with all of your stakeholders and actually get together with planning your exit strategy. Uh, we know there's a lot of that work underway with organizations looking at phased return and so forth, um, but also looking at what, what products that you currently offer. Are you still going to offer them in the same way? Are they still relevant, um, et cetera? Um, we know that we did have an operating culture where obviously risk assessments uh, were key to a lot of our industries and as to what we've done. Um, ultimately, it's carrying out risk assessments for the return to your business, risk assessments against your staff as well. Um, and I think it's very key, risk will become the consequence, um, not the cause. So I think finally, just drawing on some top tips, and some of these do link in with the message that James shared as well, um, where you can't be physically visible. Uh, it is important to be virtually visible, and it's having those check-ins with people, being able to use video conferencing tools, whether it's um, using videos or even just the, the good old telephone. I know we're in a stage where some people are actually moving forwards to perhaps having those socially distant face-to-face -face conversations, and it is great to actually see people in the flesh again, I have to admit myself. Um, Over-communicate, there's no bad things. Some people can say, right, I think I've got the message now, that's absolutely fine. But I think to, for your staff to know that their manager and leader is actually wanting to share information with them and wanting to be sure that everyone is clear is, again, very, very key. And I think the mental health message is, is the common denominator that I think underpins all of this. Uh, mental health obviously goes along with the physical health of everyone staying safe and uh, being able to still survive physically throughout and beyond this COVID crisis. But I think we can't uh, underestimate at any time, I think, just the impact that COVID-19 has had on everyone's mental health. And of course, if anyone has been in the unfortunate position to actually lose any loved ones um, as a, as a knock-on of COVID-19, we know that there is potential delayed grief there of not being able to mourn and attend funerals, so I think that's something that employers have to be mindful of as well. Being agile is key to how we move forwards, being able to pivot, 
uh, being able to seek out opportunities and just be totally innovative and creative in how you move forward is very, very key. And I think being human, um, it's very well uh, written and documented across all leadership discourse that with leaders demonstrating their vulnerability as managers can actually create a lot of buy-in and a lot of respect. And I think with that, um, no one has got the silver bullet here. No one in the world, not even President Trump, as James obviously confirmed as well. Um, I think it's important to remember that we all are only human and we're all actually in this together. Um, but it's everyone believing that by working together, we all can come out of this and actually weather the storm and be able to work together for the, for the greater good of not only our region, but also the wider economy of the country and not forgetting the economy of the world. So in conclusion, really, the new normal presents the time to support each other. And I think that's very much um, obviously why, why we're all here this morning and uh, why we're looking forward to receiving your questions and carrying on the discussion. So I'll hand back over to you, Ross. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gillian, and thank you, James. Um, excellent presentation.